You may be asking, what did Jesus mean when he promised an abundant life? He promised us that we'll have life in abundance. John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I, I am come that they might have life and that might, they might have it more abundantly. The Bible tells us that Jesus is coming to give us abundant life. Abundant life. Hmm. Okay. Now, unlike a thief, because uh, we understand how the thief works, unlike a thief, the Lord Jesus does not come for selfish reasons. A thief is coming for selfish reasons, to make sure that he steals from you, he destroys you, and he kills you. That's selfish. But Jesus does not come for those reasons. He comes to give, not to get. Okay, He comes so that people may have life in him that is meaningful, purposeful, joyful, and eternal. And we receive this abundant life in the moment that we accept him as our savior. Now, this word abundant is uh, in the Greek word, it's uh, called perison, which means exceedingly, exceedingly, very highly, or beyond measure, more or sub, uh, superfluous, it being so much that uh, it's considerably more than what one would expect or anticipate. That's what the word abundant means. In short, Jesus promises us a life far, but, far much better than what we could ever imagine. Okay? In a concept, uh, if you can be able to understand in a, in a more wider way, I can show you this verse. Let me show you and uh, I, I, I explain to you what Jesus says when he'll give you an abundant life. He's come to give you an abundant life. See, he says, but it is it's written, I has not seen, nor hear, uh, uh, nor ear has heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Just think about this. <laughs> there is no one who has ever heard the good things which are set uh, for us to be able to achieve. Now, are these physical things? Are these physical things? I don't think so. Because the Apostle Paul tells us that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, all those things. But I don't think that he's talking about physical things. He's talking about spiritual things. Okay? In Ephesians 3, 20, <clears throat> you see the kind of things that uh, God is planning for us. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, and to him be the glory of the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. He is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think. There are some things that you're thinking. You're thinking of a car, a good house, uh, <clears throat> a car, good house. You're thinking about all those good things and stuff like that, but <laughs> you're thinking about the wrong things. God is not thinking about houses, not thinking about good food. He's not thinking about uh, the things that you can think as human beings. But he's promising you that uh, he has greater things beyond measure, beyond what you can comprehend, which is planning for us. That's the abundant life that is coming to give you. In terms of economic or academic or social status, most Christians do not come from the privileged classes. We, we understand this because most Christians, uh, they just they are not corrupt. Most Christians, they don't do shady deals. So in most cases, they are not that rich. Christians are just normal people. They, they are not those billionaires. Yes, you'll find some Christians who have some money, but most Christians don't come from those wealthy backgrounds, privileged classes. So, clearly then, abundant life does not consist of an abundance of material things. Okay? It's not about material things and uh, what I have, big cars and what... No, it's, it's not that kind of thing. And when you see somebody preaching about things, 
he is uh, just a prosperity preacher trying to lie to you to focus on things here on earth do you think someone who has uh, some ferraris and lamborghinis and uh, all this lying in his front yard and a uh, good house and things like that i'm not saying they are bad will he be really thinking about oh jesus is coming let's go no <laughs> But think about someone who is in Somalia somewhere there and is being persecuted because he's preaching in the deserts and people want to kill him. He's just like waiting, oh Christ, when will you come? We just leave this world. You see, the focus is on the things above. It's not on these things here. Okay? It's not about material things. Because if it was a uh, abundant life was about material things, I think the 12 apostles then, they were, they, they, they were not even saved. They were criminals. Why? Because... They, most of them, they were poor. They died poor. They had nothing. Even Jesus himself, he said that the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. Jesus had even no, he did not even have a house. He was just staying wherever the day ends. You see, his focus and the focus of the disciples and the, the people in the early church were not these carnal things that we look upon nowadays. Okay? So, if that were the case, then Jesus would have been the wealthiest of all men if if, if money and these things would have been the case, Jesus would have been the most wealthiest and his 12 disciples. But just the opposite is true. <laughs> look, look, at, look at this. Just told you this, but let me just show you. It's good to show you these verses because sometimes people don't uh, really calculate. And Jesus said unto him, the foxes have holes. You see? At least foxes, they have some holes. The birds of the air have some nests. They have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Even to date, even if you go to uh, Israel, you can't find this house and you hear, okay, this is where Jesus used to live. No, you can't find. Because the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. It was just going as the day goes by. And things goes like that. So when you hear abundant life, it's not about material things that we think about, these lavish things. Abundant life is eternal life, okay? It's eternal life, a life that begins the moment we come to Christ and receive him as Savior. And it goes on throughout all eternity. The biblical definition of life, specifically eternal life, is provided by Jesus himself, okay? He told us what eternal life is in the book of John 17. Uh, 17 verse uh, 3 okay jesus told us what eternal life is he told us and this is eternal is life eternal or etern uh, this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent that is eternal life eternal life is basically knowing jesus okay if you know jesus you have eternal life okay this is why this definition makes no mention of length of days, health, prosperity. Do you see any health? Do you see prosperity? Do you see all those things? Do you see occupations, family, good life, and all that? It's, it's nowhere here in the description of eternal life. As a matter of fact, the only thing that does mention, uh, the only thing that it, it mentions is the knowledge of God which is the key to a truly abundant life. Not the knowledge of the things of this world. You can have a good knowledge so that you can be sharp at work and then you can, uh, you know, make some money and uh, buy, you know, buy some nice houses. But that is not eternal life. That's worldly knowledge. But the knowledge of God is all about focused on the heavenly things, not the material things. So then, okay, if we have heard about this, okay, then what is uh, what is the abundant life then? If it's not all these things, okay, it's not material things, no? God uh, always tells us that materialistic things, they don't impress him. Your soul impress him, okay? So if it's not all these good things, then what is that abundant life? life that jesus promised okay first abundance is spiritual abundance not material abundance is spiritual not material in fact god is 
not overly concerned with the physical circumstances of our lives. He's not concerned about the things which we are going through in our lives. He's not really concerned but because he tells us, he assures us that we don't even need to worry about those things because he knows what we need even before we ask. So we should not be concerned about the, these things of the world. You know, uh, uh, what are we going to eat? What are we going to... I'm not talking about lavish styles. God does not, God does not give us our wants. He gives us our needs. You see, a car is a want. I want uh, two cars so that uh, when I would drive with one and I fail to change, I can drive with the other. That, that's a want. God gives us our needs. He can give you a car, yes, because he knows you need to go to work, you need to go back home, you need to go and preach somewhere where you can uh, go buy food. He can give you a car, yeah, that's, that will be a need. He can give you a home, a place to lay your head because uh, you're his child. But he does not provide our wants. He gives us our needs. And that's where the people confuse, okay? In fact, God is not concerned with all these physical things. Because he told us in the book of uh, Matthew, remember? Matthew 6, uh, 20, 25 should be, 25. Jesus told us something here. He told us, therefore I say unto you, take no thought uh, take no thought for your life. Don't even think about your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, for yet for your body, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment or clothes. Why are you worried about what you'll eat and what you'll drink and what you'll wear? Behold the falls of the air, for they saw not Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are they not much better? Are you not? Are you not much better than they? Think, most people are chasing wind, and you chase and say, "Oh, I, I, I want to have this. I want to have this because if I don't have, I don't have my my granary full. What's going to happen tomorrow, the day after?" Jesus tells us, "Come on, the birds of the air they don't work yet; they eat." Are you not more important than those birds? And you are supposed to subdue them? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Can you add one meter to your, to, your, to your height or to your life? Or add one inch to your life? Because uh, you're, you're worried? And why take ye thought of raiment? In simple terms, why are you thinking about your clothes and uh, and the houses and what am I going to do, my school fees, my this and that? Why are you worried about this? Consider the lilies, consider the, the flowers. The lilies are the flowers. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet, I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, or ye of little faith? Mm. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where, wh what shall we be clothed in? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. You see what the Bible is saying? That the Gentiles, the people who are lost, they are seeking these things. The people of the world, they are seeking these things. They wake up every day running to say, oh, I want to retire a, a millionaire. I want to do this and this. I want to be a rich man. I want to let my name be known. I want my children to go to the biggest, most expensive schools. This is what the Gentiles are seeking. Okay? But you're not to be like these lost people. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? So don't take any thought for tomorrow. The Bible tells you, take therefore no thought for the morrow. This is not my words. You may say, oh, Keith, so should, we should not be thinking about what we'll eat. <laughs> it's not my words. Don't, uh, don't, don't kill the messenger. Look at where the message came from. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. My friends, don't keep on running and thinking of material things. Because the Bible tells us about this. 
Jesus assures us, don't worry about these filthy things that you're running after. Okay? Don't be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for nothing. God knows what you need. And also in the book of Philippians, he, he has told us, Philippians 4, verse 19, he's told us also about the same. He said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply every of your need. So why are you worried? Why are you, why are you worried? Why are you thinking, oh, he cannot supply? No, he said he'll supply everything that you need. He will supply to you, okay? Everything you need. Physical blessings may or may not be part of a God-centered life. Okay? Those kind of physical things, they may, they may or may not be a part of God-centered life. Neither our wealth or our poverty is a sure indication of our standing with God. Because Solomon had all material things. Solomon had all material things and the blessings of life. Yet the Bible says they were all meaningless. They did not mean anything like we have read. And also we can see the book of uh, Ephesians. The book of Ephesians uh, uh, 5, uh, 10. Mm. We can read to 15. Come on, guys. Don't, 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 don't be running after and saying, Oh, I need this. I need that. I need this. I need this. It's, it's okay. Life abundant, abundant life is no material things. And I'm, and I'm doing this so that I may show you first to understand. The, uh, the Bible says, Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Why is the Bible talking about the unfruitful works of darkness? The moment you're chasing these things of this world, you will start working in the darkness because this world is full of darkness. The moment you're chasing money, you'll start doing corrupt deals. You'll start doing uh, some shoddy things in, at a job, at the workplace, so that you can earn more. But the Bible says, don't be like that. Reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Those kind of deals that people do so that they can be able to make more. It is a shame. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest is light. Okay? Wherefore he said, awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. Okay? See then that you walk uh, uh, circum circumpiously, not as fools, but as wise. Come on, guys. Don't look at things here in the world and say, I want this, I want that, I want this, because I think that's the abundant life. Christ tells you it's not about materialistic things. All he's talking about, he wants to give you your life, eternal life. That's why your soul matters to him, not material things. Okay? Not temporal things. Just look at most of these uh, comments by different people. This is a quote. All material changes in all material changes in everyday life are small in comparison with those in our spiritual life. You know, material things. Just this came gave me a thought. Material things are changing every day. When you maybe a couple of years back, iPhone three was the best. Then iPhone 4 came. Now we're talking about iPhone 12, iPhone 13. Maybe it's coming and many other things. And uh, if if your life or your happiness is based on the new iPhone, the new car, the new house, the new TV, the new this and that, um, I think you'll never be happy because new things are coming out every day. Every day new things are coming out. And the Bible tells us, please don't focus on those things. And also Paul, remember, Paul the Apostle, on the other hand, he was content in whatever physical circumstances he found himself in. He was one of the greatest apostles, yet he was content. He didn't really care about uh, so many things, um, uh, saying, uh, I, I need this, God, please give me this, give me that. No, he was content. See what he says. Not that I speak in respect of want. He does. It's not about want. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there are we to be content. Are you content, my brothers? Are you content in whichever state that you are in? Are you content? See, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere, 
in all things i am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need so paul is content in whichever situation if he has some 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 uh, maybe extra clothes he's content if he doesn't have he's content if he has some food today he's content if he doesn't it's okay because he's focusing on the things above spiritual things he's not focusing on the physical things because most people are focusing on temporal things but eternal life is what matters he who believes the son has eternal life can you say can you exchange eternal life for temporal things lavish good cars good houses can you change that because even the antichrist i think he'll be the the richest of all them all because he'll get everything he needs now will will him because he has some good cars and nice planes and houses will he have eternal life no no so abundant life doesn't really mean earthly things it means things in heaven okay eternal life focusing put your treasures up in heaven and of course another thing you have to understand about eternal life is that the life of a christian is truly cons uh, concerned uh with the determination to have a relationship with god this is why we are converted and we receive the gift of the holy spirit why do you receive the holy spirit because the holy spirit gives us that life once we have the holy spirit we know we have life because the moment you believe the gospel you have eternal life and the holy spirit comes in so someone who does not have the holy spirit it's it, it means that he is not a believer and it means that he his end everything that he enjoys is just the things of this world he can enjoy the thing that's why you see satanist and other these uh, people of the world they enjoy so much the things of the world and they say oh i i need to have this because your law you live only once my friends you don't live once this life and more life which is eternal life and it will all depend with you where you want to spend that eternal life if you want to spend it in heaven etern eternity or you want to spend it in hell it's all up to you my friends okay because the bible tells us we have eternal life when we believe in jesus first john 5:11 to 13 and also we have that life in fullness in fullness eternal fullness and the length of life on earth is not synonymous with abundant life here what you are living is just a couple of days couple of days but then we have another life which is so much to even comprehend finally finally uh a christian's life revolves around growing in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ second peter 3:18 go and read this one because i don't take much time and uh, this teaches us that the abundant life is a continual process of learning learning and practicing and and maturing as well as failing recovering adjusting enduring overcoming because in our present state we see just a poor reflection just as a mirror is like what you're seeing right now is just a, a poor reflection of ourselves of what we are going to be you know that is a hard word let me let me show you what the bible says first corinthians 13:12 First Corinthians thirteen, uh, twelve. It says, mm, "For now we see we see through a glass, darkly, okay. But then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known." You see the life that you're seeing and what you're saying oh jesus is good we'll have th good things in heaven we're only seeing darkly just like if someone the way someone sees through a glass when we talk about good things in heaven when you talk about what jesus is planning to do to our lives we're only seeing like a like a glass in a dark way we can't really comprehend what god is preparing for us but then face to face we shall see him as he is one day is coming one day we'll be able to see and know the truth 
one day we'll see God to face and we will know him completely and we will be known completely okay will be known completely that's a promise god gave us we will no longer struggle with sin and doubt and this will be the ultimate fulfilled abundant life okay are you are you getting the point and of course although we are although we are naturally uh, desirous of material things as christians our perspective on life must be revolutionized remember in romans 12 12 uh, we should be changed okay we should we should have a new thought our mind should be changed be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind let's have our mind renewed so that we can focus on things above not things down here just as we become new creations when we come to christ remember in second corinthians 5 17 it says that when you believe you are a new creature you become a new creature okay and if you're a new creature so must our understanding of abundance be transformed true abundant life consists of an abundance uh, of love joy peace all these gifts of the holy spirit remember all the, the the bible says in galatians 5 22 to 23 it tells us the fruit of the p or, or uh, of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance again as such there is no law my friends it is not just an abundance of stuff not abundance of stuff worldly things it is abundance of the things of god and that abundance is the main thing is the eternal life and then he will give us all these fruits so that we can do good and be able to uh, uh, have some good works so that when we go to heaven we have something to inherit okay so all this abundant life consists on of, of, of uh, eternal life and uh, also our interest in the eternal things not the temporal things and paul admonishes us and tells us to set our minds on things above let me finish with this colossians colossians uh, 3 verses uh, 2 uh, colossians 3 2 paul tells us to focus on things above he says paul uh oops uh, it's colossians 3 sorry colossians 3 uh, verse 2 2 to 3 it says this set your affection on things above not things on the earth for you are dead and your life is hid with christ in god a dead person can that person be focusing on uh, the car that i left on earth and you're dead you're in your grave can a dead person think about my house? Can a dead person think, come on, my friends, when you're in Christ, you're already dead to this world. Stop thinking about what car you'll buy, what you'll have, and all these lavish things. Even if you buy a good car to a dead person, he can drive it. He doesn't need to do anything. Come on, my friends, you're dead to this. And abundant life that you're waiting for is in Christ Jesus in heaven. Okay? And if you're still there out and you're not saved, you don't have that abundant life, please believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died for us. He shed his blood for us so that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life there are five points which you need to understand so that you can be saved number one you need to understand that you're lost number two you need to hear the gospel number three you need to understand the gospel and number four you need to believe the gospel and number five you confess what you have believed you can confess what you don't know you only confess what you know how that christ died for your sins you understand and you believe that christ died for your sins he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures he didn't die for nothing he replaced himself you are the one supposed to be on that cross but jesus said no i'll take the blame while he was still seen as christ died for us when you understand all you need to do is tell jesus what you have understood you tell him jesus i believe now 
with all my heart, without any shadow of a doubt, that you died for my sins, you are buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. I believe in you and I accept that payment, that atonement for sin by faith. Be my Lord and Savior. Once you do that, my friends, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also you can uh, share to your friends so that they can also be able to hear the gospel. You can also subscribe to watch more videos which you post every day and uh, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new video which we post. And likewise, at the description below, we have a, a couple of other channels that we post out of, a, uh, apart from just YouTube. Please just check them out and also share to your friends. God bless you and have a good time.